So first, let's talk about what oligopoly means. Well, the word, you might have heard of the word oligarchy, and that's when a few people are ruling the country. The root word oligo just means a few. So oligopoly is when there's just a few big businesses, as opposed to a monopoly where there's one business. So an oligopoly, basically, because there's a few firms, not just one, you know, but it's not quite perfect competition because there's no free entry. People can't just spring up shop and compete with you. So that's what an oligopoly is. There's a few firms, not just one, but other people can't really enter easily. So now, what's the HHI index? Well, it's basically a number between 0 and 10,000, and it's basically going to tell you how much competition there is in the market. Notice that the HHI, it's not like each individual business or firm has an HHI, you talk about an HHI for the industry as a whole. For all firms in that industry, you can sort of, you know, figure out the HHI for the industry, and that's going to tell you how much competition there is or isn't in that industry. Now, the formula is just the sum of the market share squared. So, what does that even mean? Let's say you have just two businesses, let's say Coke and Pepsi. They're the only two providers of soda, hypothetically, and let's say that they both have about 50% of the market share. What that means is 50% 50, uh, 50 of all customers for sodas go to Coke and the other 50% go to Pepsi. So in that case, if we want to find the HHI in that industry, we would simply do 50 squared plus, because that's what the sum sign means, 50 squared. So the percent share for Coke, squared plus a percent share for Pepsi squared. Notice that the order of operation kind of matters here, so you can't just do 50 plus 50 first and then square that. You have to square each one individually because you'll get a different number that way. So here, that first 50 squared is 2,500. You can plug that into a calculator. Plus, that's also 2,500, which actually adds up to 5,000. So whenever there's exactly two firms and they both have exactly half of the market, that's called a perfect duopoly. Duo meaning two, so as so here, if the HHI is zero, by the way, that's perfect competition, because in perfect competition, you're a price taker, so it's kind of like you have zero percent of the market, which is kind of a weird thing conceptually, but either way, zero squared plus zero squared a bunch of times is still zero, so there's, you know, a lot of competition. And the bigger the HHI is, the less competition there is. So we just found that if the HHI was 5,000, that's a perfect duopoly. The extreme example of it is, what if there's just one firm, a monopoly, that has 100% of the market share, then it's just 100 squared and that's it, and that's 10,000, that's the extreme case. Now, for practice, if you had, let's say, three firms and they had, you know, 40% of the market, 40% uh, of the market, and 20% of the market, notice that these all have to add up to 100. But what you want to do to find the HHI is just 40 squared plus 40 squared, plus 20 squared, and you can find that and you'll get a number, and notice that's more competition than just two businesses, right? So it's going to be less than 5,000. We could do the math here, 40 squared is 1,600, plus 1,600, plus 20 squared is 400, so either way that adds up to 3,600. So as we predicted, 3,600 is if there's three businesses, not quite equal, but either way, that's how you calculate HHI. So what might oligopoly questions look like? Let's say you're given the market demand curve, but instead of being told that it's a monopoly and you want to find MR equals MC, you're given that it's a duopoly, that there's two firms. And let's say you're one of the firms and you somehow know that the other guy, let's say you have that intel, that they're always going to produce a quantity of five or something. Well, in that case, what you want to do is this. And this is called a strategic demand curve. This is the market demand curve. This is what quantity all customers in the market are going to demand at that price. And strategically, if you know that the other guy is always going to make five units, so you can find your, your quantity. Usually you can capital Q, lowercase q. Somehow you can distinguish it. But that's the quantity that you want to produce. And it's really whatever the quantity the market is demanding minus five, because that's what we know the other guy is going to provide. So you could first just subtract 5 from all these quantities, so that'd be 5, that'd be, if the quantity is going to be 20 in the market, you, you're going to provide 15 of those, the other guy's making 5 here, 25 here, 35. And then from there, once you've narrowed it down to your strategic demand curve, and this is the price, 
you want to ignore this and basically all you have to do from here is find the MR equals MC and do the same process as you did with a monopoly. Here you can do P times Q to get a, a table for the total revenue. So 10 times 5 is 50 and so on. 9 times 15. You can get all these numbers. That's the total revenue. You can find the change in uh, total revenue over change in Q to get the MR and then compare that to the MC. And that's a quantity that you want to make. And that's how you can find how to optimize your profits if you're a duopoly. But here, there's a deeper issue here. When you're in perfect competition, your profits solely depend on your actions because basically you have no power. You have no ability to set prices. You're a price taker. So if you decide I'm going to make 10 units, your profit's predetermined because you can't really change the price. On the other hand, if you're a monopoly, the other extreme of it, you're so powerful that your profits are again solely determined by your actions. So once you've determined the price, you already know what the quantity is going to be and everything's already predetermined. But with a duopoly, it's a little different because your profits highly depend on what one other guy is doing. If you're Coca-Cola and if you're like, I'm going to sell cans for $1 each, you have no idea if you're going to make a lot of money or very little money because it depends on what the other guy does. If the other guy, you know, sells his product for only 50 cents, you're probably going to get no customers. But if he sets it at $3, you're going to get a lot of customers. So point is, our regular math that we've done with perfect competition and monopoly kind of doesn't work with oligopolies because you're highly dependent on another guy. You kind of have to think in the other person's shoes and whatnot. So we actually have to bring in a new branch of math to analyze oligopolies. And that branch of math is called game theory. It was actually originally invented by John Nash. You might be familiar with the movie A Beautiful Mind. It was actually about him. Uh, he invented that in the 50s and he kind of uh, got a Nobel Prize for it all the way in the 90s because mathematicians didn't really recognize it back then, but economists kind of sort of picked it up like, oh, this kind of applies for oligopolies. And so he got a Nobel Prize in economics uh, 40 years later. But that's what game theory is, and we're going to use that to analyze uh, oligopolies. I was actually fortunate enough to get to have coffee with him once before he passed away, unfortunately, a few years ago.